Good God. Preacher squinted over the barrel of his sharps through the loophole. Those hombres must not have the sense God gave a badger. Here they come again. Son of a gun! Matt was forced to draw back momentarily from his loophole. So were Smoke and Preacher. More coming out the trees! Smoke saw men dart out from cover, race past their companions who were firing from behind the stumps, and then dive behind other stumps. They're leapfrogging at us, blast it! That wasn't the only trickery going on. Circling to your left, Matt! Matt twisted in that direction and thrust the barrel of the Winchester through an open. There was only one thing to do. Smoke leaned his Winchester against the wall, threw aside the bar that kept the door closed, threw one of the long-barreled 44s he carried in his holster, and yanked the door open. Palming out the other colt, he leaped outside, landing on his belly. Smoke's left-hand gun slammed bullets into the bodies of the men charging at the cabin head-on. The right-hand colt tracked the gunnies who were trying to circle in that direction. Smoke scrambled to his hands and knees and dived back through the doorway. Matt hurried after him, slamming the door closed and dropping the bar in its brackets again. You give them old boys what for? I reckon we did, Preacher. The last I saw, they were skedaddling back to the trees. Ones who could still move, that is. It was a mite of a hornet's nest in here. Plenty of slugs flying around. <laughs> Preacher touched a gnarled finger to his cheek, and the tip came away bloody. Well, felt like one of them kissed me. Sure enough, it did. Bannerman must be paying those boys pretty well. That many gun wolves don't come cheap. If there's one thing Reese Bannerman has, it's money, and plenty of it. Then why is a dang fool want more? Why is it so all fired important that he steal this valley from Crazy Bear's people? Smoke picked up his rifle again and took his place at the loophole. He peered out at the silent trees where the gunmen were hidden. I guess some men never get enough, no matter how much they have. Well, I ain't gonna let it happen. We're gonna get out of this fix somehow and show Bannerman he can't get away with it. I owe Crazy Bear a whole heap of thanks for what he'd done for me. That's why I come a-running when I heard he was in trouble. Crazy Bear's a good man. I was glad to help out when I got your letter, Preacher. Good thing I was visiting Smoke at Sugarloaf at the time, because I want to be in on this, too. You just want to see Crazy Bear's daughter again. I won't deny that. You young fellas may be fond of Crazy Bear, but I owe the old rap scallion my life. I ever tell you that story, Smoke? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, Preacher had told him that story before. But it was a pretty good yarn, and they needed something to pass the time while they waited for Bannerman's hired guns to attack him again. So as the three men stood and watched, and the heat grew worse in the cabin, Preacher told his tale. Well, it was about 30 years ago, I reckon. I was on my way through the same valley. were no ranches nor towns here about in those days. It's still mighty wild country, and it might cost a man his hide if he didn't keep his eyes open. 